We're in Fort, Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale by the library. Praise be to God. We're going to pray right now. We're coming into the presence of the Lord God Almighty. We give you great reverence right now. Heavenly Father, we need you here. I thank you, Lord, that you said that in the last days you're going to pour your spirit out of the all flesh, that your sons and daughters are going to prophesy, that your old men are going to dream dreams, and that there'll be signs in the heaven and signs on the earth. And vapor spoke in many things. Because you're here, we're here to reveal your truth, for you are in the truth, the way, and the life. And nobody will come unto you unless they go through the blood of Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive all those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Record this day. Record this day what the Lord is going to do right here, right now, for such a time as this. Holy Spirit of the living God. You're my best friend. You're my everything. You and me and I and you. He said that greater works am I going to do now that you, now that Jesus is set at the right hand of the throne of God. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for the greater works. I thank you, Lord, that I'm going to your bone and crush your flesh. That you take divine in us. That there's nothing that could ever separate us from your love. You made us in your image. And we look like you. <laughs> How wonderful are you. The wellspring of life. The water that flows out from the throne of God. The throne of heaven is coming down right now. It's right here in this earth, as it is in heaven. It is here now in this earth, for such a time as this. For such a time as this. For you said, Lord, that there is a great reward. There is a great reward for the ones who lay down their life for you. That there's the greatest reward is to walk with you and to hear your voice and to know that you're speaking and just to hear your thoughts that you think towards us. Because it always has good thoughts. That's a peace, not of evil, but give us an expected end. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad he gives you chance after chance after chance? And he never gives up on you? So we're going to read the word today. Oh, Jesus, I love you. How great is his love. going to read Matthew
He hears every single word. He knows what you're thinking. He knows where you've been. And he says, I love you anyway. <laughs> Who else will do that? Who else just loves you where you're at? And he throws out of your sins as far as the east is to the west. And, and he remembers them no more. Who is the one who blots out everything that you've done with the blood. He just flings his blood on you. And he says, even though your sins are as gold, I make you white as snow. <laughs> even though you were filthy, wretched, blind, and naked, he just comes for you and says, you just don't know who you are. You're just listening to the wrong God. You're just following the loser. You need to follow the winner. His name is Jesus. He's get on the winning team. Get on the one that you get good things from. Healing, love, joy. He says, I'm your portion and you're my prize. Nobody will ever love you like Jesus loves you. Nobody. Can't even find his love in this world. You're just going to end up dry. But Jesus pours water on dry bones. And he says, and then he says, can these dry bones come alive? And Jesus is like, yeah, that's what I can do. Watch what, watch what I can do with one person that will submit to Jesus, resist the devil, and I'll flee from him. Let me show you what I can do with one person that gives me every single thing. Who lays down their life for their neighbor. Who esteems others better than themselves. Let me show you what I can do with the one who just dies to self. It just gives me everything. We're reading the gospel. We aren't sugarcoating anything. They are telling you that you can sin and get to heaven. You won't go to heaven, you'll go straight to hell. Did you get it? There's no, nothing in the Bible that says you can sin and go to heaven. Just do whatever you want and, you know, God will forgive you. Jesus, the first words out of Jesus' mouth was, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. What does that mean? It means wake up and say, Lord, forgive me for everything I've ever done. And if there's anybody that I hold unforgiveness in my heart, I, I forgive them, Father, and I forget. And I ask you to bless them. That's repentance. And then you have to live your life for Jesus. You can't be of the world and say that you love Jesus. Because he says that's just a lie. He says, how can you how can you say Lord of the Lord and not do the things I've asked you to do? How can you say you know me, but then you go out and you get drunk and then you go commit adultery and you say you know me? You don't know me. If you know me, you love me. If you know me, you give your life to me. If you know me, you give everything away to serve me. If you know me, you would come out here and feed all of these homeless people. You know, don't anybody, does, does anybody see anybody over here, you know? It really grieves me. It grieves the Lord that a block and a half, there's people who have so much money that they could feed you every single day. But see, they don't know Jesus. They're just lost. You can have a billion dollars 
and be wretched, blind, naked, and not even see the love of God. But Jesus says, for the rich you have your consolation. He said it's very hard, very hard for a rich man to enter in. A rich man came to Jesus and said, hey, Hey, what do I have to do to follow me? And he said, and Jesus said, sell all that you have and come and follow me. And the guy, he said, he walked away because he had many riches and he wanted to keep everything he had. He said, no. I guess I won't follow you today. I like my nice car. I like my house. I like pampering myself. I like all this stuff. But Jesus says, unless you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me, then you can't even be with me. He says, unless you lose your life, you won't find it. Can I pray for you? Jesus loves you. You can run today. We're having miracle service right here. Jesus said, as he is, so am I in this world. I love that about Jesus. I love that as he is, I can do everything that Jesus did. In fact, he said, greater works will I do now that Jesus I said at the right hand of the throne of God, interceding. I believe his word. I believe that a nation can be healed in a day. I believe the land can be healed in a day. I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody will come into the Father but by Jesus Christ. Jesus says there's only one way in. And that's if you lay down your life. If you do the will of my Father. Let's read some of his words. Jesus speaks for himself when you read the word. You can see exactly who Jesus is. He said my people will perish by lack of knowledge. You have to open up the book. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. He's your bridegroom. How are you going to get to know him unless you, unless you have intimacy with him? Unless you lay down with him and say, I need to know you. I, I'm not going anywhere else until you reveal to me who you are today. I hunger and I thirst for your words. I've got to have it. If I don't hear you, then it's nothing. If I don't speak your word, it's nothing. I just be a sound. I just be a gong. I just be a noise if I didn't have your love. But let it be your love. But let it be your love that sets the captives free. Let your life persevere through it all, through your trials, through your pain, through everything that you left behind, everything that you lost. You never lose it when you get Jesus. You're gonna get it all back. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? Aren't you glad that, aren't you glad that he said, uh, don't be deceived, God will not be mocked whenever a man sows, so that he reaps? He says if you reap to, to your flesh, then you reap, what, enmity against God. You reap terrible things. 
But if you get born again today, if you get filled with the Holy Spirit today, you pass from death, you enter into life, and you come into the kingdom just as you are. But Jesus doesn't leave you that way. Aren't you glad? I'm glad that he didn't just leave me the way I was. He didn't leave me addicted. He didn't leave me broken. Leave me, you know, to do my own thing. He took me out and he showed me what real love is. What real love is. I mean, love that you all are hungry for. The real love that you all are thirsting for. And you think that it's in him, and maybe it's in her, and maybe it's in a car, and maybe if I go and drive to the beach and look out, maybe it's in the scenery. Maybe it's in this, or maybe it's in that, but it's not in any of that. It's only in Jesus. And I found that to be true. Because for many years, I wanted it. I was trying to achieve it. I thought I could do it on my own and do all I can and can all I do. And I'm going to get it one day, you know. But you know what I found out? I found out that it was nothing. I found out that it was nothing. I was, I was finding nothing. It was dry. It was like nothing. Nothing could have satisfied me until Jesus came and said, I love you. I'm proud of you. And he literally put love on me. Literally. This love that was so desirable. This love that never told me I did anything wrong. This love that said I love you and I'm proud of you. When I was filled with sin and shame, when I wasn't any good, Jesus came and he said I love you, I'm proud of you. And he just loved me. Where I was, I was undone. I was like, are you kidding me? This is too good to be true. This is like the best thing I've ever experienced. I started having a relationship with the Lord. I started, I started saying, I gotta have you. I kept saying, I kept saying, I kept saying to him, I said, Lord, I give you a whole field of flowers. And I cut them, and I put them in my arms, and I lay it down below the feet of you, Jesus. And I love you, Jesus. And I started having this relationship with the Lord. I stopped watching TV. I stopped listening to music. I cut off everything from the world. I, I said, forget it. Who cares? I don't care. I want Jesus Christ. I want what he's giving me. I, I have my right my thirst for this love. This is the And then he just started revealing himself to me. And he healed me. He healed me from verbal abuse all my life. You know, I was told you should have never been born. Why are you even here? You aren't any good. Blah, blah, blah. The lies of the enemy. The Lord healed me from verbal abuse, depression, alcoholism, and stage two leukemia cancer. You know how the Lord healed me from cancer? He asked me a question. <laughs> he said, what can I do for you? I said, well, why don't you take leukemia cancer out of me? You took everything else. So on October 25th of 2012, I walked in the Orlando Cancer Hospital, and they said, you don't have leukemia cancer anymore. I said, uh, huh. I threw my hands in the air, and I said, okay, I'm bought with the price. Okay, you got it. 
whatever you want, I'll do. And I just gave up my life. And it's been the best. You know, you think, you think that you're going to have to give up things for Jesus. You're right, you're going to have to give up everything. You're going to have to give up your worries. You're going to have to give up your shame. You're going to have to give up all your heavy luggage. You're going to have to get rid of your walls that you've built up all around you. That nobody can get in. And you can't even get out of your own walls. He tears them down. He gives you more than what you've ever had before. You're right, we're going to have to give him everything. He's a jealous God. He wants everything. He doesn't want your hour a week and then just go do whatever you want and the glory be to God. It's just a lie. He wants the real deal. He's looking for something real because he loves you so much. If he laid down his life for me, I'm going to give him something. I'm going to give him something because he didn't walk by me. He didn't let me just go to hell because I was already there. He didn't say, just stay here. No, he didn't do that. He could have just let me go. But he didn't die because his love is stronger than death. And he loves you more than anything. And he's not going to give up on you. It's just because you don't know who he is. That's why you're getting tossed to and fro. That's why you're right here right now. Because you don't know who you are. But that's okay. Jesus has come to reveal himself. He's come to reveal the Father. Jesus said that if you see me, you see the Father also. He said, I only do as my Father does. When I see him do something, that's what I do. I only do what pleases my father. Because he loved him. Jesus would go away from his disciples so he could just be one with his father. Because he loved his father. He just had to say, oh, father, I love you so much. You've been so good to me. He just had to know him. He just wanted to be with him. Because he's your father and you're his son. You're his son, you're his daughter. And you matter to him. And he hasn't forgotten you. And he's never left you. You may think that he's gone. Where is he? He's right with you. He says, I'm never leaving you for safety. You can talk to him right now. And he hears you. He hears the hunger of earth. He hears you and he loves you. And he never gives up on you. He takes you up. How many times has the angels taken you out? Guess what? I'll tell you a couple testimonies. And one thing... A car was going to come head on, um, head on. I was going to have a head on collision, man. Okay, a car was coming at me at 60 miles an hour or something, really quick. And all of a sudden, I saw the car being lifted up and it flew right next to me. It didn't hit me. I drove down the street and I went out on this dock. And I stood on the dock and I said, Woo! Did you see that, Lord? Oh my gosh! I just, I, he saved me. You know what Jesus said? He said, you think I'm going to let somebody take you out? You've got a lot of work for me to do. How many times has the Lord saved you from going this direction, from going that direction, from drinking and driving and not knowing how you got home? And he needs you. 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 And he needs
makes you listen and he's never going to give up because he's not satisfied until you're with him. He's missing a piece of his heart when you're gone away from him. A piece of him is gone and missing and he grieves for you. And I've, and I've, seen, I've seen him cry. I've heard him as he's weeping for you when you're separated from him. He's like, why are they listening to the liar? Why are they following after doctrines taught by devils? Why are they preaching the word of God? Why, why, why are they listening to the deceiver and going and doing whatever they want, thinking that they're going to get to me somehow? And he's like, no, that doesn't happen. Go to hell. 
When I'm preaching the gospel, there'll be no blood on my hands. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because the Lord's writing every single thing that I'm saying to you now, right here. And Jesus said, it's time to make it better. For you have tied a millstone around your neck and to be thrown in the sea and drowned than to lead one person away from me. It would have been better for you. 